This version of Goku defeated the most diabolical villain in all of Dragon Ball Z and narrowly escaped a dying planet Namek with his life. And this figure just happens to be the greatest Goku figure ever made. Those are accomplishments worth celebrating. So today I'm making a dying planet Namek diorama to display my prized Goku action figure in. I almost never use this foam for diorama builds because of how flaky and messy it is. But this is actually the perfect project to use it in. You'll see why in a few minutes. First, we need our old friend XPS foam. The white foam is going to be our base, but that foam doesn't carve nearly as well as the pink foam. So we're going to dress the base up with some rock formation carvings of the pink stuff. I've tried a lot of rock formation carving techniques over the years and have found that the simpler the technique, the better the results. But carving isn't going to be enough. I need to get a believable rock formation texture. Rolled up balls of tin foil and actual rocks are best for this. Now that the rock pieces are cut and textured, I need to figure out how I want to lay these out. Normally, this step is somewhat trivial, but I'm going to be doing my first ever resin pour to replicate a pool of lava, so I need to ensure I create a layout that will feel authentic to a lava terrain scene, while also keeping in mind that I need to hold the pool of resin I want to include. While hot glue isn't the strongest glue for foam crafting, I chose it for this because it dries quickly and because I'm going to be using plaster of Paris to cover the entire piece, which will ensure everything I laid out stays in place. I love using this to protect my foam terrain pieces regardless of if I'm using resin or not. It seriously adds to the durability and believability of my terrain builds. This is a pretty large diorama, so applying plaster to the entire thing can be somewhat of an adventure. I did my best to cover the entire piece, making sure to fill any gaps along the outskirts of the lava pool area and fix any imperfections in my lava rock terrain sculpt. Off camera, I applied some of the dried plaster pieces to mimic lava rock debris throughout the piece. You can see an example of it here. I let the entire base dry for a good 24 to 36 hours before moving on to the next step, priming the piece. Before we get to the next step, I want to give a huge shout out to one of my favorite YouTubers, Boy Lie Hobby Time. The next two techniques that you're going to see are things that I have never tried before this project. And they're actually things that I learned by watching his incredible videos. The first is what's known as a Zenithal Highlight. After spray painting this entire piece black, I sprayed a gray primer lightly from above the piece to simulate shadows from an imaginary light source. The second is a resin pour. I've always been intimidated by using resin in my dioramas, but seeing Boilai Hobby Time do it during the making of his The High Ground Mustafar diorama inspired me to give it a shot. I thoroughly read the instructions before trying this, and I made sure that I protected myself with some gloves and some safety goggles before doing the pour. But before I could do the pour, I wanted to make sure that I got a little bit more color variation on my rock formations, so I went ahead and airbrushed some of this Vallejo Gray on top of the entire piece. This is a two-part epoxy resin mixture. To be sure that I was doing equal parts A and B, I made sure to use this plastic measuring cup and just poured very carefully and kept an eye on it as I went. I always thought working with epoxy resin would have like a really strong odor, but I was surprised to see that this stuff didn't have any smell at all, which is why I'm not wearing any respirators or anything like that, and the instructions did not say that it was required. But the instructions did say to mix this up for three minutes, so I made sure to set a timer and stirred this thing up as best as I possibly could. And then it was time to add my color. I used some resin pigments that I found on Amazon and mixed up a cup of red, a cup of orange, and a cup of yellow. I poured in all of my red resin first, and I honestly thought that I recorded that. It turns out that I didn't get that footage, so my apologies. And then I moved on to pouring in some of the orange resin. My goal with the orange resin was to increase the volume of the lava pool, but also just to increase the color variation of the lava. I'm using a popsicle stick here to help guide where the resin's going because I really wanted it to stay off of the rocks and I didn't fully accomplish that. There was one area that I messed up, but I had to give myself some grace because after all, this was my first time trying this. 
Then I took the yellow and applied it sparingly to the lava pool. In my mind, this color serves as the highlight, so I was careful not to let it overpower the rest of the resin pool. And I haven't had the opportunity to see a real lava pool in real life, so I definitely relied on the Dragon Ball Z reference material and other reference material that I was able to find on the internet of different lava pools. After my colors were poured, I used a heat gun to pop any resin bubbles and also to blow the fuse in my shed. <laughs> Oh, are you kidding me? After I got the lights back on and my heaters turned off, I put my heat gun back on and used it to get a cool swirl effect in the lava. I was experimenting with this, so I decided to drip some yellow and orange pigment directly into the resin pool. I used the heat gun again and then off camera used a popsicle stick to swirl things around a bit more by hand. I let the resin pool cure for a good 48 hours and then at the end of that time I had a beautiful solid surface that looks like hot molten lava. But there is still one problem with this piece. I still have this soft white foam on the bottom. I'm worried about the durability of the piece so I can't leave it that way. So I went to Lowe's and got a quarter inch thick wood. Which I cut to size using my circular saw and then sanded using my Ryobi sander. I spray painted the bottom the same color that I used on the rest of the terrain earlier in the video. After the spray paint dried I brought it inside and started applying some regular old wood glue to the entire wood piece. I used a scrap of XPS foam to spread the glue around the entire wood surface because I wanted to make sure that this held very securely. I also applied hot wire foam factory styro glue to the perimeter of the wood piece to ensure even more security. All right, it's finally time for the last step, placing this piece down and gluing it to the wood. And now there's only one thing left to do, show you the final piece. Thanks for taking the time to watch me build this lava terrain piece and now I have a question for you. Are you more likely to try a resin pour after seeing this? Let me know in the comments. If you like what you saw today, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel and like the video. Want to see more Dragon Ball inspired dioramas? I've got you covered. Click right here to see more dioramas that I created inspired by the world of Akira Toriyama. Vasco Toys, action figure, dioramas and props.